So apparently Jack Dorsey's first tweet sold for 2.5 million dollars. Let us think it. Alright, if you already knew the news, and it to the party, I understand. So basically what actually are NFTs? So NFT is called non-fungible token and it's called non-fungible because uh, you know a dollar is equal to a dollar, a bitcoin is equal to a bitcoin, but those tokens are not equal to another token. If I create a token, that e token is not equal to a token created by another user. There is a common consensus that NFTs are unique, they hold value because they are unique. It's kind of true, it's not fully true. Well, it's technically fully true because NFTs are unique, but not the content. What that means is, if I have a photo of me, I took the photo of me, a selfie, because I'm so good looking, <laughs> and then I tokenize it. And then I go to a site like rarible.com and then I decide to sell it as an NFT. I create a token and what happens is the token for that photo is unique. The token is created. I become the photo's owner. So it is defined that I am the owner of that photo and I hold the rights to that photo because I took it. Now, but you can right click the photo and save the photo and again re-upload it. So the content is duplicated. But if you re-upload it and then you decide to sell that as an NFT, what that becomes is, yeah, it becomes an NFT, but whose value is more? Now, as you can see here, content can be duplicated, but the tokens are unique. How can we verify of the authenticity of the creator? Now, in this NFT technology, it is done using, usually done using digital certificate. Now, if you know what digital certificate is, uh, it's like, I have my private key, and I have my public key. Now, if a content is created by me, then I sign it using my private key, and then it can be viewed using my public mm -hmm. key. If you are viewing it using my public key, it means that I am the creator. Since my photo was the original one, and I had signed it with my certificate, the public or anybody knows that this is the original because I signed it and I am the creator. All right, and yours is just a copy. Now, Ethereum is the most common blockchain that is being used to create NFTs. All right, so let's look at what and uh, what Ethereum says about NFTs. Now, as you can see here, the first line it says it is a way of representing anything unique as an Ethereum-based asset. Now, if you look at the word Ethereum-based, all right. Now we'll go into it deeper a little bit later. And now the second line says NFTs are giving more power to content creators than ever before. Now it is uh, NFTs are actually not giving the power it's just the way of saying that the creator is the owner of an asset and they can sell it on any NFT marketplace it's actually the users that are giving the power because it's being hyped up so much the NFT marketplaces like Rarible, OpenSea and VIV3 are hyped up so much there are so many users and it's all rage right now people are buying the stuff rapidly and on, at a very high rate that is what giving the powers to the creator see let's say if I create a marketplace and there is no buyers then it's like it's of no use because there are no buyers so actual power is not given by the NFT itself but the power is given by the marketplace or the users because there are so many users in that marketplace that the content are easily already bought and now it says it's powered by smart contracts uh, sorry it says powered by smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain so once again here we see the world is Ethereum blockchain. So what are the different blockchains for NFT? Now Ethereum is the most common one but we also have uh, like Flow by Dapper and that's where our uh, NBA Top Shot is being built on or it's already built. Now, there are other blockchains that has NFT functionality so it's not just Ethereum. So we have Ethereum, we have Flow, Tron now also has its own NFT functionality. So now for a different blockchain, we have different market marketplace. All the NFTs in Ethereum are in Rarible or OpenSea or any other marketplace. And the NFTs on Flow by Dapper Labs are on a different marketplace like NBA Top Shot or VIV3. So different there are different marketplaces for different blockchains. So me as a content creator, if I create a content and upload it in Rarible, so that means it is it is going on Ethereum blockchain. And I see like there are no users there, I need to switch marketplace and I go to VIV3. Now 
than it is on the flow blockchain. So, as you can see here, I can have the same content on different blockchains and they'll be in different marketplaces. Now, since there are different marketplaces, now how is a token unique? Now, let's get into it. The token is unique within a blockchain. It's not like universal, it's unique in all the blockchains. It's just unique in the current blockchain. So, if I upload a piece of content and it is in Rarible, it can be in OpenSea, it can be in any other Ethereum marketplace, it will be unique throughout the marketplace. But if I go to, if I switch blockchains, then the token will be unique in that blockchain's market. Now, how is it maintained? How is the uniqueness maintained throughout all the different marketplaces of one blockchain family? It is done using standards. So, just like JSON and XML, there are a standard on which an NFT is built. So, for Ethereum, we have ERC721, that is the most popular one, and uh, Ethereum is also working on ERC1155. Here underlines the basic differences between those two standards. Now, ERC721 has, uh, you know, it's all the tokens are unique, but in ERC1155, Ethereum has different classes. So that means uh, different classes of tokens. Let's say there are tickets, movie tickets. Now movie ticket of one theater are equivalent with one another for one movie. But it is not switched with, it cannot be switched with another movie theater's tickets. So there are different classes being introduced in ERC1155 but uh, the most popular one and the currently used one is ERC721. Now those are the standards of Ethereum blockchain. What about the other blockchain like the Pro blockchain that has uh, NBA Top Shot and they have their own standard. So if I can, if I want to create a marketplace, now I need to choose which standard am I building the market first marketplace for? Am I building the marketplace for Ethereum blockchain or am I building the marketplace for Flow blockchain? All right. So that is what it is. There are different marketplaces for different blockchains, and no matter there are thousands of marketplaces for Ethereum, all those things, all those marketplaces will have will have the same standard they'll be following the same standards and if i have a marketplace for flow blockchain all the different marketplaces will have the same standards they'll be following the nfts of same standards so what's this about what about the uniqueness now the uniqueness in itself is not the power in some way that's what I, that's how i'd like to put it the uni uh, the power actually is in the marketplace and how adaptable the marketplace is and how people are adapting to the marketplace. If a marketplace has zero users, then it gives no power to any creator whatsoever because what's the use of the content if it's not being sold, if there are no users in the marketplace. So adoption is one big factor. And this was a short video on NFTs about the confusion that I have. Now we can go a lot deeper than this. This is just, this is like the tip, not even the tip of an iceberg. So if you are interested in more, learning more, just feel free to ask me, I'll give all of your questions and answer and if you want to learn something specific just let me know and drop in the comment section below what you want to learn and I'll help you out with that. Peace.